It seems like there is no hotline to anyone in Iran now. No, and I think it's worth mentioning we are, of course, mindful of U.S. troops uh, in the field. But as the sun comes up in Iran and it is 7 a.m. there now, it is worth mentioning, it is worth remembering that millions of people in Iran and in Syria and in Lebanon and in Israel are waking up this morning very, very scared in a region uh, that seems to be one step closer uh, to another war, Lawrence. I personally have no confidence that this particular commander-in-chief can do that. So we have like a guy who is driving down the highway, you know, at 100 miles an hour, going through the guardrails. He was going through guardrails here in the United States. Now he's going through guardrails internationally. And we do not know what the wreckage is going to be. Andrea Mitchell, uh, uh, what are you looking at as the next stage of this story? Well, there's going to be a lot of uh, claiming of credit for this. The president with his flag tweet has certainly made this a U.S. versus Iran event, if it weren't already, from the claim of responsibility for this as a defensive act, they say. Interestingly, Israel had many opportunities to take Soleimani out and did not for fear of retaliation, for fear of what this, what a cultural figure he was throughout the Middle East. So I fear retaliation. And as others have suggested, at the time and place of Iran's choosing, which could even reach over the waters to the United States. Um, grave concerns that there is no plan, that there's no policy, that this is another one-off act, um, perhaps well justified by Soleimani's career of, of murder and terrorism, but one that has not been well thought and well planned.